The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and today I'm on Grady White's Canyon 336. This boat's been completely rejuvenated for this model year, and I'm going to do a full performance evaluation and features inspection on it. But first, let's talk about what separates Grady White from the rest of the pack. To me, what spells out a Grady first has to start with this wide flared bow. This is giving a nice dry ride and a 50 plus degree dead rise at the bow, nice penetration through the waves. Grady White also has a patented CV2 hull design that has a variable dead rise. It's 30, 35 degrees at midships, and then by the time that we get to the stern, 20 degrees, and that's going to give us our stability combined with the offshore wave penetration, excellent handling characteristics. Grady White uses all hand-laid fiberglass construction. The stringer system is composite, and there's a composite transom reinforced with aluminum, so it's hefty enough to hold these 425 horsepower Yamaha XTO offshore series engines. We can board from either a port side dive door or this conveniently located starboard side cockpit step. Now I said that this was an updated version for this model year. The 336 has been around for a while, but now it's completely different. To me, the main feature has to be this redesigned console. It now holds two 17-inch displays. Could probably hold even more if we move the Yamaha display and the VHF radio to another location. Notice we also have huge wraparound windshields, so there's full visibility through these without having to look through curved glass. And I also love that there's a vent up on top. This huge console also is protected by this brand new T-top overhead. This has PFD holder up above, electronics box, Taco Grand Slam outriggers to the sides, LED lighting, speakers, four rod holders to the back, and there's even an option for the extendable sure shade awning coming out the trailing edge. And I like how this comes out far enough to give shade to this entire cockpit area. Now the console is also higher, and because of that, I'd like to see a flip down step to bring me up about six inches, but I'm 5'8", so taller captains won't have a problem with that. However, the elevated console now gives us more headroom down below. Let's take a look inside here. This cabin now has an average ceiling height of six feet, two inches, and this allows us to have one, two, three, four, five, six vertical rod storage racks there's a berth that goes forward seven feet four inches and it even has a flip seat back. Now while we're in this cabin area let's talk about some of the additional features here. There's a storage compartment just aft of me that can be used to hold a Seakeeper 3 gyro stabilizer. The vacuum flush toilet is connected to a 10 gallon holding tank and we can have a 5 kW generator installed in this boat that will give us air conditioning in this space. The ship's main electrical panel is located on the aft bulkhead. There's even space for a concealed microwave, and this is also a wet head. The sink doubles as a shower. Now, Grady White is obviously a premium builder of offshore fishing machines, but let's talk about the fishing features that make this the capable platform that she is, and it's got to start with this rigging station just forward of the cockpit. 45-gallon live well is standard. There's a 26-gallon live well that's optional. Both will be insulated, and if we choose not to use this optional feature, then it'll be a cooler. There's storage underneath that includes tackle storage, six rod holders down below, and four just above. Down below, two sets of tool holders and there's even a freshwater wash down. Now just behind, 28 square feet of cockpit space for bringing the fight to the fish. Padded bolsters go all the way around and in the cockpit area here, they top out at 28 inches. There are convenient tow rails just underneath in the bulwarks. How safe is that? And in addition to the 10 rod holders that I've already pointed out, there are another 11 going around the boat in the cap rail, and we can increase that by six more if Grady White would swap out the beverage holders with combination rod holder beverage holders. Now take a look at this over on the port hand side. A hull side dive door slash tuna door. This is now standard for this model year. And after we haul in that ginormous tuna, where are we gonna put it? Well, we've got fish lockers, two in the bow, 204 quarts each, 291 quart right here at the transom. And this one can also be refrigerated. Remove the cushions from the bow and you've got a nice casting platform. 
And when it's time to clean up the deck just to the port hand side of the transom, a fresh and raw water wash down, all of the water that's on the deck goes out the drains in the aft section and then overboard, not into the bilge. And frankly, all it takes is a washdown to convert this boat from a capable fishing platform to a family platform. Let's take a look at some of those features now. The family features have to start with this transom seat and notice that it's the easiest I've seen to deploy and to stow again. Great job on that Grady White. The transom door gives us easy access to the swim platform. There's a four-step reboarding ladder and notice the lengthy grab handle right alongside. And once you're out of the water, you're gonna to wanna to shower off with a fresh water shower. The controls are just ahead. The bow, of course, another equally welcoming area. Starts with a seat 41 inches wide just in front of the console and then there are two lounge seats 53 inches long and notice how the seat backs flip out of the way to provide even a little bit more room. All of this is under the protection of this optional shade that really adds to the comfort level of the bow. With a filler panel and filler cushions in place, we now have a sun pad measuring seven feet, four inches across at the aft end, five feet across at the forward end, and four feet, seven inches fore and aft. A pedestal table adds to the functionality of the bow area. To both sides of the bow, there are two eight-inch pull-up cleats, and these are the first two of six on board the boat. In between, there's a hatch that opens on a turn and lock latch and a gas assist strut, and inside, look at this, a Lumar windlass leading out to a through the stem anchor roller. There's a cleat just inside and control switches along the starboard side. If we flip the transom seat up out of the way, that gives us access to this hatch. And if I open it up, it gives us easy access to the control levers for the seacocks. And notice that there are extensions on those levers and they're all clearly labeled. Right alongside are the battery switches. Now let's look over some additional features of the helm. There's a convenient place for putting stuff up front. It's got a padded surface, and notice it's draining out the sides, down onto the deck, and then overboard. Just below, carbon fiber panel holding the rocker switches, and I like that the breakers are right alongside. Richie Compass in the middle has a display both in the front and along the aft perimeter. The optional bow thruster is conveniently located right next to the steering wheel. Down below, cubby for putting more stuff, and this one also has a 12-volt adapter. Drink holders, Apollo Fusion Stereo. And just behind, take a look at these seats. Each one has individual flip-up armrests and flip bolsters. They adjust fore and aft. Down below, there are drop-down footrests. And then underneath, here's easy access to the boat's batteries. Now, let's get underway and see how she performs. Really love the way the Canyon 336 handles. Putting her in a tight turn, no chine walk whatsoever, and no prop ventilation, which comes around nice and smartly. Grabs the water, gives you a little shove to the side. One thing I really like, this steering wheel, rubber grips on both the inside and the top of it. So even with wet hands, with fish slime on your hands, you're able to grip the wheel nicely, and I like the steering knob always. This boat also has the Yamaha Speed Control, which is part of the digital throttle and shifts. Now, our testing was conducted in calm water, but with a boat that has Canyon in its name, I just had to get it out into open water to see how she dealt with waves. We had two to three foot rollers off of North Carolina, and she showed excellent handling characteristics. The wide flared bow threw water low and wide for a dry ride. There wasn't a hint of pounding. With the narrow 50 plus dead rise at the bow, she slices right through the waves. When she would catch air, she stayed level and had a smooth re-entry with no slamming. She really is a capable offshore platform. The Grady White Canyon 336 has a length overall of 33 feet 6 inches, a beam of 11 feet 7 inches, and a draft of 26 inches. With an empty weight of 10,165 pounds, full fuel, four people on board, test engines, and optional equipment on board, we had an estimated test weight of 15,565 pounds. With the twin Yamaha 425 horsepower XTO offshore four strokes turning 16 and 5 eighths by 19 props, we reached a top speed of 50.6 miles an hour at 6,000 RPM. Best cruise came in at 3,500 RPM and 25.1 miles an hour. At that speed, the 23.8 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 1.1 miles per gallon and a range of 343 statute miles, all while holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 361 gallon total fuel capacity. 
We reached planing speed in an average 4.4 seconds. Zero to 20 came and went in 6.5 and we cruised through 30 miles an hour in 11.4 seconds. At the dock, the joystick is dialed in perfectly. Often with new builds, we have to compensate for the bow or stern being more aggressive than the other, but this was not the case here. And I found no need to even touch the optional bow thruster. It was that well-mannered. Do make use of the adjustable power control buttons for increasing or decreasing the thrust. It makes things a lot smoother. Like all manufacturers, Grady One is not only building new models, it's constantly improving existing models. The 336 has been a great performer for some time now, but with this new model year, Grady White has really stepped up and raised the bar, making improvements that have made a hugely popular boat that much better. And that's my inspection and test of the latest iteration of the Canyon 336 from Grady White. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.